Next up, at UFC 297, we have Brad Katana taking on Garrett Armfield. Brad Katana, 13-2. and two. This guy, two-time Ultimate Fighter winner. He's 5-0 and oh in his last five, coming off that Ultimate Fighter win at UFC 292. He's taking on Garrett Armfield, 9-3 and three overall, 4-1 and one in his last five. He's coming off his first ever UFC win. I mentioned two-time Ultimate Fighter winner for Bad Katana. He won this last season with Connor. Tough 31. He was the winner of that. He won a fight of the night war to take home that belt. But that was not the first time that he was on the Ultimate Fighter and not the first time he won the Ultimate Fighter. He also won season 27. So he's a two-time Ultimate Fighter winner with a submission win over Bryce Mitchell during that journey. So he's actually very accomplished at only 13 and two. Style-wise, he's a mobile striker. He's got some okay power. He's got some good volume. And he's primarily a striker, but he is aware enough to transition to wrestling if he's losing some of those extractions, extractions, exchanges. He's got good low kick, solid takedown defense, and plenty of cardio. He's taking on Garrett Armfield. He's a technical striker who doubles up his jab, switches his stance well. Always working forward, but he's going to stay controlled. And he doesn't take too many risks. He does a really good job kicking the legs before coming up to the head. He's got solid takedown defense. And while he doesn't typically look for offensive takedowns, when he does, he's got some clean power shots and he works them in well. He's coming off that knockout win over Tashiyoma Kazama, where his striking looked really good and he touched him up early. This is a fun striker versus striker matchup. Both of these guys are busy. They both have good cardio. Both of them can drop their opponents. Neither guy likely looking to wrestle. I am going to pick Brad here. I recognize Garrett Armfield's a pretty good underdog at 9-3. Uh, and three. Not a ton of fights, but you know he's, he's better than his UFC debut. right? David Onama smoked him. That was a short-notice UFC debut. He's better than that for sure. But I think Brad at this point has proven that he can win big fights. He's worked his way through two separate tournaments in the Ultimate Fighter and won it both times. He won the last fight on a big pay-per-view in a good slot, in a war. So I think I at this point, Brad is the pick. I can trust him more. I think he's got... The busy come forward striking. I think he can blast Garrett's legs. I, Garrett is actually probably going to be the more technical striker, but Brad can wrestle if he needs to. Brad's got that confidence of a far more experienced fighter, two-time Ultimate Fighter champion, plenty of time in the octagon, plenty of stuff on his resume. I mean, he submitted Bryce Mitchell, who I'm not a huge fan of, but I think Brad wins this fight. Uh, I'm pretty confident in him, but I liked his minus 155 better than his minus 190. But Brad Katana is the pick. What do you think, Jakey Boombalutes? Yeah, here's what I'll say about a guy like Brad Katana is I understand the the record, and I want to touch on that because I, th I believe that if you took somebody that's never watched MMA before and you put them in a room and you showed them just highlights of a hundred fighters and you told them after you watched the highlights what their record was either maybe they're undefeated or maybe they're, they're a, a seven and seven or maybe they're five and 13 just so they had a general idea of what a certain fighter looks like and then you showed them a video of brad katana in his fights I think the last thing they would say is 13 and 2. And, and that's just almost gives him credit because I think a lot of times he comes in these fights, not the more talented guy, but he finds a way to win these fights. I think in his last fight, that ultimate fighter fight, I think the other guy was a, a better fighter than him. But all of a sudden, he's landing one powerful shot. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh my God, he just won that round. And then he starts fighting the next round. He's like, ah, he, he just doesn't look like he's a little bit flat footed to me, doesn't have a ton of speed. Obviously, he doesn't have a ton of power, only one KO and 13 wins. And all of a sudden, he just won another round. You're like, how does this guy keep winning? But he is kind of that just winner mentality type guy. He just he just grinds out the the, the rounds. As you mentioned, we'll mix in some takedowns if he needs to. And he is just one of those guys that's just, just very methodical. Just boom, 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 boom. Stay in the pocket. He's not bouncing in now. He's just kind of staying in your face. He does get hit. He absorbs the shot well up to this point. He returns fire, lands some good enough shots, and he wins fights. So coming into this fight... I don't think there's anything crazy special about Brad, except for he seems like he's been durable up to this point, and he definitely is a winner in that mentality. Garrett Armfield, this dude's a dog. 
To me, I like the way this guy fights. I like his mentality. He came in three days notice, up in weight against David Onama, a guy he had already lost to. A eight, David Onama was minus 800 going into that fight. What did Garrett Armfield do in that fight? He, he fucking took it right to him. He wasn't backing up and, oh, I'm a three-day, I got I to gotta save myself and I don't want to get finished. I'm a big dog. He fucking what took it twist. to him. The live what odds. Twist. The live odds after what that first twist. round went from David Onama minus 800 to David Onama minus 250. Everyone was fucking panicking. They were like, oh, my God, Garrett Armfield is about to upset this dude. It's one of the biggest upsets of all time. Now, short notice, down, up in weight. It got to him. Onama was able to get the takedown. He came in his next fight and really showed who he is as a fighter. And that is tenacious. That is in your face that is really sharp crisp very powerful striking and i believe that he, if he gets in the face of brad katana brad katana gets hit enough that i think he's gonna be able to find a shot or two and even if he doesn't find a knock i'm not saying this guy's knockout or bust but i'm saying that even if he doesn't he has wrestling he was at sanford mma for a while now he is with a, a camp mma something in I think it's, it's at st louis but he's over there with uh, like miles johns with trey yodgin with Evan Elder, and uh, they're all in his corner. So uh, I like Garrett. This dude's a dog. I, I think that he can grind out a, a couple rounds. It's probably a decision fight, but if anybody's going to find the finish, I think Garrett could find the finish with the hands. He's a powerful dude for 135, um, and I like him in this fight. Yeah, listen, I um, I think this is a close fight. My notes in the quick pick breakdown, I said this is probably a 29-28, and I'm leaning Brad because I do think Garrett could potentially slow down later, and Brad, we know for a fact, does not slow down. He just continues to come forward. I don't think Garrett slows down. I don't, I, I don't have, a, yeah, I don't like necessarily have evidence of him I watched that. I, you know down. what's funny is I watched his, his split decision win uh, like three or four fights ago or something because I was like, all right, if that's a back and forth affair, let me see how he is at the end of the third round and this and that. Dude, he fucking dominated that fight, got the takedowns, got control the entire time, and that was still a split decision. When they said it's a split decision, they both looked at each other and were like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, well, what the fuck? It was 30-27, 30-27, and then it split the other way, 29-28, but he looked good. Three rounds. Wrestling the whole time. Well, and Dixon Sider's got a decent point. I can't stand this fucking guy either, but a decent I point a, with... I have uh, a bet that I like, and I'm not going to give it away. Well, I might look at that plus three and a half. I think that may actually look pretty good. I'll see what those odds are. I'm trying to Probably, right because this should be a close fight, even though Armfield's a plus 165 dog. The Minus books know. Yeah, that's not worth it. That, that's gone. Forget it. Never mind. Not worth it. I got, a good, know, I got a good one. Well, if you want to unlock Jacob's bet, weonpicks.com. Click become a member. It's only $10 a month. If you're wondering what the hell that plus three and a half means, you're putting money on the spread. You're buying points on the judge's scorecard. So... If you bet the underdog, in this case, Garrett Armfield, at plus three and a half, all he needs to do is win one single round on all three judges' scorecards, and then your bet hits. Or he can win the fight outright, anything like that. If he gets finished or if he gets shut down 30-27, then the bet misses. But that's a great bet when you have a big underdog in what should be a close fight. But minus 190, no. Somebody That's said that all three of Armfield's losses were due to his lack of grappling. One was on three days' notice, up in weight, versus a monster in David Onama. The other one was versus fucking Ronnie Lawrence. Ronnie Lawrence got to outgrapple most people. So. Yeah. Well, not uh, not my man, but yeah. Well, he was about to get fucking smoked, too, by... Uh, yeah. Was it Argueda? Argueda. Yeah. Oh, I love that, too, because I picked Argueda. I was all over Argueda. It was a big underdog, and he tooled him, and then the ref was like... Let me interfere here. And then somebody else said, Brad Katana looking like he's behind his quota for the month. Katana ever come around me? I saw, I saw. Both I, hands on the steering wheel. I saw, <laughs> he does have I a saw, crazy look at his eye. I saw three people say Brad Katana looks like a cop. Shoot, looks like shoot a cop. first, ask questions later type of guy. <laughs> he acts like that too. In the house, I didn't watch the season of The Ultimate Fighter, but I watched some exchanges and stuff, and I had to watch his tape before UFC 292. And he acts like a cop too. Like just like his demeanor is pretty funny. So well, anyway, that with the with the belt on. Yeah, very like very. And I got tons of. Co I love cops actually. I'm, I'm not like a narc, but uh, I do have. Well, I, I got kind of played into that one. <laughs> I got plenty of cops in the family. When I said I love cops, that wasn't extreme. I guess I was prefacing I'm not like anti-cop. So I just like people. That's for a people, very anti-cop thing to say. That's what somebody that was anti-cop would say. 
a, a, a recently converted anti copper. A recently converted. I'm F-12. not racist. F twelve. F twelve. And I actually didn't know what that because actually all three of the uh, my cousins they're they're not really my cousins we grew up together we call each other cousins because we're Italian that's how it works. Three hey, brothers, right. all three of them are cops, and so we all have a group chat going. Any, I love uh, sending them my anti cop stuff. Do you have any inbreds in your family? Uh, no, no, that's uh, your people, Midwest. Southern kind of thing to no, do. No, that's uh, that's uh, kind of in between me and you, honestly. I mean, that's West Virginia, that's East Tennessee. I mean, that's I mean, that's the that's the region there. I mean, you get in those hills, and you know. How that's many people that you went to high school with don't have all their teeth today? Just a few. Yeah. Okay. Every single person I know has all of their teeth. So I think we settled that well it's gonna i mean i think the zins and stuff are gonna help that because there's I mean, everyone, everyone <laughs> in my high school, high school was, was was definitely dipping everyone had a can of chew in high school so i think the zins are gonna help well it's funny because my my uh one of the guys i go hunting with dips and he converted to zin and uh the other dude i go hunting with took one and he uh it like gave him a wild, like it like a buzzed him good. Oh yeah, yeah. For, I've, only, I've, only, good. I've only actually dipped one time, and I, I'd already been drinking. And I remember I was sitting on the, a beanbag chair, watching my friend play Call of Duty, and I put it in. And about a minute passed, and I'm like, oh shit, okay. And then about two minutes passed, and I was like, oh shit. And then three minutes passed, and I literally my from my shoulders to my hips, my shoulders, my arms were completely <laughs> numb, my yeah. legs were completely <laughs> numb. Four, four, five minutes passed, and the room was just going. Six that's minutes. I, that's passed, why I won't tip. Six minutes passed, and I was literally running down the stairs to get to the bathroom to throw up, and I fucking puked everywhere. About eight minutes into the dip, so no, I, but I dipped, great stuff. I dipped once, uh, like in high school. Same thing, like head rush, buzz, and since then I'm like, I'm not, fucking, I'm not, no yeah, interest. It's, intense, I, I don't know what's enjoyable about it. Like no interest. Just smoke a I, cigarette. A, a cigarette won't. A cigarette will make you feel good, but it's not going to get you, like, I mean, a dip will fuck you up. I'm pretty sure we'll get kicked off of YouTube saying that. What, that is like, yeah, that's probably <laughs> way more offensive. I mean, I, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, but, I mean, there was nothing better. When you're 21, 22 years old, this was back in the day when you could smoke inside at the bar. There was nothing better than being hammered drunk, getting a menthol from some hot chick, going out. When it's like right now, when you're hot as shit, you've been dancing because, you know, I'm on the dance floor just dancing my ass off. You're sweating. You go out. You either go, you could stay inside and smoke, or a lot of times you would go outside because it was nice and cool. It'd be 20 degrees outside, and you're sitting there, and you light up a menthol and that fucking rush just hits your body i'm saying dude, dude, careful, dude I mean, the pro cigarette stuff will get us kicked off of I mean, youtube it's fucking it's, fucking, it's dude, different man shut a 2 a.m down. A 2 a. menthol at a bar down, it fucking it's different dude even netflix it's a like tvma and it'll say why it'll say smoke. smoking it's like what the fuck but so it's no bad. yeah don't do it it's disgusting to to actually do it. I, I grew up in a, the first my, time I kissed a girl that smoked. It literally was like I always heard you always hear like, oh, your mouth tastes like an ashtray. I don't know if you've ever, yeah, but it's fucking, it's just fucking disgusting. No, my 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 mom smoked. She's an immigrant, which I have mentioned, and um, so she smoked. She smoked since she was like six. She's done now. But um, so I grew up like I was the kid. You don't realize you're the stinky kid, but like <laughs> I would get dropped off at elementary school. I must have stunk like cigarettes because cigarettes now. And pee. Dude, you smell it so infrequently now that it's like a thing. Like when I smell, oh, yeah. actually, I went to Kroger my today. Whole, and, whole, uh, my whole thing is uh, smoke free. You can't smoke anywhere yeah. on the whatever. So when I smell it, I'm like, who the fuck is smoking? Oh, I'm just immediately like, you piece of trash. Like, it's just like you trash bag. Meanwhile, from like ages zero to 16, I just reeked of cigarettes all the time. because right. like, I mean, you went to the restaurant and it's like smoking or non-smoking. It's like. There's a yeah. there's a wait for non-smoking. It's like all right, we'll sit in the smoking section. It's like well, okay. Yeah. Okay. And there was no there was no it, yeah it just was the no same different. room. <laughs> yeah. It's just the same room. It's just not blown right in your face. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's try. I mean, you get off. Let's off move track. on. You're gonna love this next slide. This is really gonna be up your alley. If you sign up today to become a premium member, it is only ten dollars a month, and you will unlock everything you have ever needed to have success watching these fights, including. The safety parlay in the wild world that is betting on MMA fights, the safety parlay remains a shining star. 70% hit rate. I'm going to pause. 70% hit rate 
betting on any sport is nuts. Betting on fist fights is an impossible task. It is the most stable bet in this space. That is an objective fact, period, end of story. I invented the term safety parlay. You're going to see other people saying it. They are copycats. I own safetyparlay.com. That is my thing. We want picks.com. It's only $10 a month. You will unlock this, the line movement tracker, the odds maker, everything you have ever needed, the DraftKings optimizer, everything. We on picks.com, only $10 a month. Just click become a member at the top. And we tend, what I actually should do is the math. It's a 70% hit rate overall. I should do the math on what the hit rate is on pay-per-view specifically. Even though I will say this week's safety parlay, there's a note. Read the note before you go ahead and tail. 